Hello, my name is Scott and today we're going to complete our introduction to problem definition uh, by looking at the second half of a typical offers analysis. So in this process we're going to examine how we consider the effects, the requirements and the specifications of the product or the process that we're looking to design. So in the first video we had a look at objective functions and factors, so everyone should be familiar with them now. And in this video, we're going to look at the effects first of all. So when we're coming up with a potential solution to a problem, we've got to consider what the impacts might be of us finding the solution. We've also got to carefully document the requirements so that we give ourselves some goals to be able to measure how well we've done with our solution and, and has it met our original objective. And in terms of specifications, we have to be very conscious of what are the hard limitations on the various solutions that we might be examining so that we can sort out which ones are going to be viable and which ones are not viable. So those are the things that we're going to look at now. So when we think about VEX, we have to think about what sort of influences a successful solution might have on the broader community, marketplace or the world. So here are some example questions that we can use to provoke us to think about the different effects that our solution might have. Will our solution encourage a commercial competitor? Will the solution cause social disruption? Or maybe it would cause social harmony. These are things that we should think about when we're designing our products. Will the solution lead to a family of similar solutions? So if we came up with a stapler, for instance, are there other areas of commerce or industry where we could apply a similar solution in a different context? Does our solution have wide applications? And even does it have political applications? When atomic energy was discovered or invented, very quickly it had wider political applications when uh, they turned that into an atomic bomb. So these are things that we occasionally have to be conscious of. Could our solution lead to brand recognition? If you go over to America, it's probably more common for someone to ask you for a Kleenex than it is for them to ask you for a tissue. Could our solution cause offence to some people? And is our solution likely to be environmentally friendly or unfriendly, and should that be part of our decision-making process? So these are some of the questions that you should be asking yourself to see what kind of effect your solution might have on the broader community. Requirements. Now here is where it starts to get a little bit tricky and we start to put some numbers on some of these options that we're coming up with. Normally we can group them into four categories. Those categories are performance, so things like strength, weight, speed, power, etc. These requirements are generally pretty obvious. The next one is appearance. Sometimes we have to think about the aesthetics and the desirability of the product that we're designing and developing. Engineers aren't always the best people to judge aesthetics and desirability, so sometimes we might bring in designers or even do clinic trials of potential customers to figure out what is going to appeal to our target market the most. Safety. So we should always keep in mind the safety of our products, both to itself, to people and the environment. And lastly, cost. In general, cost is always going to be an important consideration in terms of the products and services that we design. In the picture shown, if you want a personal aircraft but your budget is only $10,000, then that's going to severely limit the options that you're able to look at. So each of these requirements we have to put a measurable criterion on so that we can quantify the different options um, that are on the table that we've come up with and so we can compare them and then decide which of them is going to be the best for us. To do this, we generally tabulate our requirements and also these criteria. So just taking some generic ones for the time being, let's look at performance. That might include things like high strength and a sample criteria might be fracture load in kilonewtons. If we had low weight as a performance requirement, we could measure that in terms of mass in kilograms. We may have a requirement that our design is compact, in which case the sample criteria would be the volume of the device in meters cubed. For aesthetics, we might want to bring in some designers to judge whether we've done a good job on how the product looks. And for safety, there are a range of standards that we might like to draw upon to prove that our device is actually safe for the marketplace. And finally, cost. That's generally pretty easy. We typically measure that in terms of manufacturing costs or maybe even retail cost of our product. 
So once we've specified our requirements and also our criteria, the next step is commonly to put a weighting on these criteria, and this will tell us how important the different requirements are relative to each other. As an example, let's say for high strength, we might want to put a weighting of 5. Generally with weightings we work between 1 and 10, and because this is the first one I've come up with, I'm just going to guess 5, and as we work through the other options, we're going to increase or decrease the weighting relative to this high strength one. In terms of low weight, we're not very concerned with low weight in this particular scenario, so we're going to put NA there, that's something that you have the choice of doing. For compact, we don't think it's quite as important as high strength, so we're going to give it a value of 3. For aesthetics, we think that aesthetics in this case is somewhere between um, compact and high strength in terms of importance, so we've given it a 4. For safety, provided it satisfies the standard, we're not going to give an additional weighting to any uh, that are more safe than that, so we've put an NA here. And for cheap, because we've given it a weighting of 15, that shows that it is very, very important, three times more important than high strength, and in fact more important than all of the other criteria put together in this example. The final step in our office process now is to develop some specifications. So now we're going to put some numbers on our criteria to show the range of values that are acceptable for our solution. So if these are not met, then the solution is not considered valid and we're not going to consider it as one of the options. So we've got here currently some examples that I've just added based on the previous mythical scenario. First one here, I've put a specification of greater than 50 kilonewtons for this high strength fracture load. So this means that any options that fracture at less than 50 kilonewtons are not going to be considered. We're only going to consider options that are stronger than that. For weight, I've specified that the weight must be less than 200 kilos. Anything heavier than that, we're not going to consider as a valid option. For compact, I've chosen not to put a specification on there. We're just going to look at all the different options and then use the weightings to decide which one is better or worse, but there's no minimum or maximum limit on this. The same with aesthetics. So it's a bit difficult to set a minimum or a maximum standard for aesthetics, given that this judgment is generally qualitative. For safety, we're going to have the specification that it must comply with the standard that we've identified. And for low cost, we're going to specify that it must be less than $500 Australian to manufacture. If we return now to our example of the product we're designing to hold washing on a horizontal line, I didn't say peg, we can look at some sample weightings and specifications that we might define for this problem. So in terms of the first performance requirement being strong grip, we've given that a weighting of 5 in this case and specified that all of our viable options must provide a grip force or a pull-off force of greater than 20 newtons. So this is relatively important. In terms of ease of use, we've set the user force, so the force at the hand, to be less than 5 newtons as a specification. And if it's less than that, we've got a weighting of Na, so we don't really care. We're not going to put options ahead of other options if it's any less than 5 newtons. There's no real advantage in that. For long life, for number of cycles, we've specified that our viable options must last for greater than 200 cycles, and we've got a small weighting on that importance for anything beyond that. For aesthetics, we've got a small weighting of 3, but no specification, so we'd like this peg to be um, particularly attractive and appeal to buyers on that basis. For safety, we're going to specify a minimum corner radius of 0.2 millimetres to ensure that there are not too many sharp edges on our peg, and provided we meet that specification, we don't think it's necessary to provide a weighting on that. In terms of the damage this device might potentially cause to our clothes, we're going to specify that there be no damage caused to our clothes over a drying period of seven days, and provided it satisfies this specification, then uh, we're not going to put a weighting on it beyond that. For cost, we're going to specify that our device costs less than two cents per item, and we've given it a weighting of 10 on low cost, so this means that it's a very important criteria for us to meet, and the one that we choose is probably going to be one of the lower cost options that we develop. 
Thanks for watching. That's the end of today's video.